that. We're going to begin with the political debate of the day, healthcare uh, especially. We're joined here by Democratic Governor Martin O'Malley, the Vice Chairman of the Democratic Governors Association and the Chief Executive to, and our neighbor to the north there in Maryland. Thank you for being Good here. Good to be with you guys. Um, Governor O'Malley, I want to start on health care, uh, if I may. I recall uh, back in the summer at a National Governors Association meeting where all the nation's governors get together, there was a lot of concern, Democrats and Republicans both, that by getting so many more people covered with insurance, that one way the bill is doing that is to expand this eligibility of Medicaid. And of course, the states and the federal government share the cost uh, of Medicaid. So. In, 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 and there was concern among your fellow governors and your fellow Democratic governors about this as well. Is this health care plan, let's say, gets 30 million people insured that don't have insurance now, is that s largely on the back of the states? That, no, that it's Obama's not. Doing it? in, in, in fact, if we do not change the status quo, there is no way that any state in the union is going to be able to afford the constantly escalating 7, 8, 9 percent annual increases. That, that NGA moment in Biloxi was a wonderful... Uh, uh, moment where we all came together as Democrats and Republicans, A, to say we really need health care reform, and B, none of us want to pay for it. But, <laughs> but really, the question is, really the question is what cost do we avoid? Uh, we do not mind, for example, I would not mind as, as governor, as I look at the status quo, which would add $3.6 billion to our expenses for health care, both on the Medicaid and employer side, if instead we only had to pay a billion additional over the next five years, one would have to say that that's a step in the right direction. So really a lot of this is about cost avoidance. We have to pay a little bit more uh, in order to realize the long-term savings and bring down the cost curve, and that's what the Obama administration's doing. And I'm, I'm very much encouraged by the direction in which it's going. We heard all sorts of things in Biloxi about how dogs and cats would be falling from the <laughs> sky, every state would be bankrupt because of this, but the truth of the matter is that both the Senate uh, versions and the House versions are actually moving to something that's good for states. I want to ask you about the stimulus, because you're seeing the money get spent firsthand in Maryland Thank and in Thank God many, President many other Obama states. did it. Thank God. Well, 263,000 jobs lo lost last month. Pres uh, Vice President Biden says we we've, we've created a million jobs. H how do you square that when you continue to see the number of jobs uh, lost going up uh, and, and he's him saying that there's new jobs being created? Look, we were, we were teetering on the brink of a second Great Depression. President Obama wisely took action, pushed the recovery uh, bill through, and now we're all talking about, well, when exactly will the recovery kick in instead of talking about splattering but into the yet. second Great Depression? But not yet. 263,000 well, is a lot of jobs lost. Sure. And the unemployment tail of this will lag behind the other indicators. But if you look at Maryland, for example, we've seen our unemployment actually start to level off. We've created more jobs than we've lost in two of the last four months. We're seeing our housing uh, sales actually going up, and we see reasons for hope out there. And had he not done it, gentlemen, every state in the union would have been putting tens of thousands of teachers in unemployment lines, shoving people off of health care. But does it also postpone some of the inevitable deeper pain that you may feel in the state? So we were just talking about health care. You said, okay, states are going to have to pay some more. There are going to be uh, Medicaid eligibility is going to increase. There's one bill that you're going to have to pay a little bit more. This stimulus money on uh, Medicaid, unemployment benefits, what have you, that's going to run out. Sure. And yet you're going to have this whole new pool of people that you're going to have to continue to pay for, and the, and the federal dollars won't be there anymore, right? Well, it was designed not to be there permanently. It was designed to protect our children's future, particularly in education and health care, and stabilize state budgets so that the states were not adding to those unemployment roles. Gentlemen, none of us likes 9.8 percent unemployment, but I will bet you that it would have been more like 16 or 17 percent had President Obama not acted. So uh, we are far better off because of the recovery and reinvestment dollars, despite all the uh, people saying that we could not possibly spend it or apply it the right way, we are applying it. And the other good news is these dollars are creating new jobs that are actually going to benefit the economy for many years into the future. And it absolutely had to be done. Otherwise, uh, we would have headed into a depression. What I asked about the, about the Democratic Governors Association, uh, you've got a, a, a great organization and a lot of a Men lot of women making tough decisions in of, tough times and a lot of democratic governorships that that you'll be defending in both in, 20, in 2009 and, and in 2010 what what kind of advice are you giving candidates about how to handle the associations with national democrats and with uh, with president obama when you see the support for democratic leaders in congress and president obama's support personally softening 
Well, the, the, best, the best political advice that anyone could give to Democratic governors or those that aspire to be Democratic governors is to govern well and to tell people the truth about the choices that we have in front of us. Do you have to distance yourself from Washington, from the national message, the national Democrats? I don't believe you do. And I, in fact, I believe that actually for us in, in Maryland, uh, we have uh, actually uh, are very much encouraged by having cabinet members that pick up the phone when we call, that are working on things like improving homeland security, improving health care, improving education. Uh, so I don't think it's a matter of, of of running away or running to. I think it's a matter of governing well, making the tough decisions in these times. And over time, people appreciate, while the, as painful as they are uh, at the moment those decisions are made, people in their chief executives, especially when we're facing unemployment and home foreclosures, they want men and women that are going to make the tough decisions regardless of politics. And so governing well is really the best political advice that any of us as incumbents have, and it's the best advice we can give to those that are challenging. You want to guarantee victory in New Jersey and Virginia this year? Sure, I'll guarantee it. Who's going <laughs> to... <laughs> we'll have you back on. That's right. <laughs> we have exciting races in New Jersey and Virginia. We're fighting an uphill battle. It has not been since Ronald Reagan's first term, I think, that the first term uh, president was actually able to hang on right. to those two off-year elections. But Creed Deeds is coming on in Virginia. Uh, John Corzine coming on in New Jersey. We'll see, and, we got uh, your we'll see what those races will do to sort of tell us what 2010 is about as well. Governor Martin O'Malley, Democrat of Maryland, thank you very much for Gentlemen, being here. Gentlemen, thank you. Thank you, Appreciate sir. it.